What's up guys? So today we're back with another tutorial for process serving. Okay guys, this job can be tough, we all know it. Those of you that have gone out and tried doing this, it can be difficult. It can be a downright pain in the ass. But there are several ways to make it easier. We've kind of gone step by step through them all. Today's no different. So today's video is gonna be about being sneaky. Always remember, we're not out here delivering roses. We are out here delivering bad news, horrible news, things that people don't wanna get. So sometimes when you go out to serve papers, the first chance you get might be the only chance that you get. So make it easier on yourselves. So today, we're gonna to be talking about eight ways to be a sneaky little devil. Before we get into the video too much further, I would like to give my sponsor, servemanager.com, a shout out. If you have not given them a look yet, you need to head over to their website to see what they have to offer. It's an online resource for process servers that covers this, that, and everything in between on their website. They handle it all for you. I used to do it handwritten style, and it's a pain in the butt. With servemanager.com, they take care of all of that. Once you get using their website, you'll realize just how easy it is and how much time it shaves out of your workflow. Click on the link in the description below. It is an affiliate link. It will take you to their website where you can click on the free trial, give it a shot, see what you think. I don't think you'll be disappointed as I have not been. I've enjoyed using those guys. Okay, now onto the sneaky tips. But also, if you didn't see my last video, we are doing a giveaway. By clicking on the affiliate link and signing up for the free trial, that automatically enters you into that giveaway. On to my eight ways to be sneakier. Tip number one, dress to not impress. What does that mean exactly? Think about it. If you walk into the ghetto wearing a shirt and tie, what do they think when they look out the window? They know you don't belong there. So what I would always do, whenever you go to like the ghetto, I look like crap. I mean, I intentionally go out of my way to look like the clientele that I'm serving. Because when you blend in, you don't necessarily get suspected. Tip number two, stay out of sight. Anytime I see a door with a peephole, I intentionally try to stand off to the side so I'm not in view of that people. People are curious. People are always wanting to know. They're just curious, right? So I always make an, an effort to stand off to the side and sometimes you don't have that option. But when you do, just take a little step off to the side like apartment complexes. You can always just step out of sight of that people. When you do that, people, yeah, they're gonna look through the people, but they're gonna answer the door because they're curious. Did somebody leave something at my door? What's going on? As soon as you hear that door open, step around that side. By that point, they've already committed to opening that door. They're gonna see you face to face. And this also applies to your vehicle. Just keep your vehicle as far out of sight as you can get it. I like to park down the, like for a home, I'll park down the street, a house or two, walk in. That way, if they do look out the window and choose not to answer the door, at least they don't know what you're driving. So you can catch them by surprise each time. Also with your paperwork. Keep that paperwork out of sight. We discussed that in a prior video. Roll that sucker up, put it in your hoodie pocket, put it in your back pocket, put it up your sleeve, tuck it behind your back. Just keep that paperwork out of sight. People will know what's up if they see somebody holding paperwork. Step number three, look like somebody else. This can be a pain in the ass, I, I won't lie. This can be difficult to do and it can be a lot of work to do. Like we said a minute ago, a lot of times your first attempt is your only attempt. So you want to go into it with everything in your advantage. So when I say look like somebody else, you can go into that thing looking like the pizza man. You can go into that looking like the Amazon delivery guy. Everybody orders on Amazon these days. You take an Amazon box and have it wrapped up and you stand at that door, they're going to open it. They're going, who doesn't open the door to Amazon? Come on. Flowers, we've discussed that in the past. Keep some fake flowers in a vase in your trunk. Walk up there holding it. Heck, you can even have the papers in the vase. Walk up there, they're gonna open the door, especially if it's a female, especially if it's a female. Sorry ladies, but it's true. You guys love opening the door for flowers, right? These things work. It's about being sneaky. You don't want anybody to suspect who you are before they open that door. That door is the one thing that's keeping you from getting paid. As soon as that door opens, you got them. As soon as you get contact with the person, yeah, you legally have to tell them who you are and what you have for them. But at that point, it doesn't matter because they've already opened the door. You've tricked them into opening that door. Step number four, be vague. Anytime you have somebody that does open the door, a lot of times this is gonna apply more to family members. Now, yes, you can serve family members, but there are certain cases like with supplementals, divorce papers, things that you're going to want to serve directly on the name defendant. So when you speak to the family, don't, don't give them a lot of information. In fact, don't give them anything. You just throw out what you want and get as much back from them as you can. Uh, because if you give them too much information, they are going to 
relay that information to the very person you're looking for, then you'll never get an answer and you'll never get them served. So I like to be as, as vague as absolutely possible. Step number five, something I like to call thou shalt not pass. We've all experienced the locked apartment complexes, be it a gate in the parking lot or the actual, like the building itself being locked. You go up there, pull on that door and it requires a key card or a combo. That locked door, you're just not gonna get in it unless you know the trick. What I have been known to do, and it works flawlessly, is this. You'll go, oh crap, the door's locked. I'll wait around right there. If I see somebody that lives there, that maybe, that I'm assuming lives there, and they'll be walking up the sidewalk, I grab my cell phone and I say, yeah, yeah, I know I'm down here. I'm, I'm right down here by the door. Yeah, it's locked. Yeah, I know, I'm, I'm trying to get up. Can you come get me? Oh, well, there's somebody walking up right now. I'll just come in with them and then you don't have to come down and get me that person will kind of overhear that conversation. They'll walk up there, beep in the door, they'll automatically assume you're there to see somebody because they just heard you talking on the phone to them. And as they open the door, whoop, right behind them you go. Stay in your phone that whole time, that way it doesn't give that person let you in an opportunity to say, who is it you're looking for? They, don't, they can't question you because they don't want to interrupt somebody on the phone. So I stay on the phone, I say, oh yeah, somebody just let me in. Okay, yeah, I'm on my way up right now and tell you that person that let you in is far enough away that you can boop into the elevator or the stairwell or at, down another hallway to get away from them. So they don't have that opportunity to ask you or interrogate you as to who you're talking to and who you're looking for. Step number six, it's kind of like step number three, a little different, but lie about who you are. So even if you're not dressing up like Mr. Amazon, lie about who you are, hold some mail. So when they look out that people, if you're not in a position where you can hide from the people, they'll look out that people and they'll see somebody standing there with mail. Even if they don't open the door, you can hear somebody in there, you see the blinds move, you can always just lean up to the door and say, hey, I'm just your neighbor, I've got some of your mail. They will open the door to get their mail. If somebody answers the door, yes, and they're questioning why you need to see this person, and I'm an old friend from high school, I'm an old friend, what more can they question with that? Always seem innocent. Don't ever seem like you're being sneaky. Don't seem like you're there for an alternative reason. Seem genuine, seem as innocent as you can. People react to that. Step number seven, one of my favorite ones. This is a trick I learned in law enforcement long, long time ago, and it's, it's useful every single day. And it's extremely useful in process serving. Get information from children. Children provide the best info of anybody I've ever met, especially in process serving, especially. Kids don't lie. Kids expect everybody is there for good, honest intentions, which not that we're not, but they don't, they don't understand the whole dad or mom's getting served thing, don't open the door. They don't understand that. Children will always give you an honest answer. They may be a little hesitant sometimes as they get a little bit older, but you catch a six, seven, eight year old kid and just say, is dad home? No. Where is he? Where does he work? When does he get home? You, you ask these questions to children, they will not lie to you. You can use them to your advantage to get the information you need to get your service completed. Which brings us to our final tip, number eight. Get information from the neighbors. Neighbors, a lot of times, are willing to roll on the person you're serving. I don't know if it's that they've been bad neighbors or whatever the case may be. Yes, occasionally you'll run into the neighbor that does not want to snitch on you know their neighbor because snitches get stitches, right? But a lot of times they will roll on their neighbors. This is the one time I'll be completely honest with the neighbor. I say, hey, listen, I'm, I'm here to serve them court process. They're apparently not paying their bills. I just need to serve them a summons. Can you help me out? You'd be surprised how many people are like, oh, well, yeah, yeah, that guy's kind of a dirtbag. I, yeah, you bet. Yeah. If they say, oh, they'll be home in 20 minutes usually. Oh, perfect, I'll just wait it out. All right, guys, that concludes today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got some information out of it. I Once again, I'm trying to get some videos out a little bit more often. As I just explained, I'm back to a full-time job of police work, so I'm trying to squeeze these videos in between that, uh, which is gonna be, it's gonna be fun. We're gonna try to get a few more out. At the end of this video, I'll put a link to the giveaway video. You have till December 31st, to get entered into that giveaway. It's a $1,200 value, go check it out. In the meantime, guys, happy hunting with all your serves. I hope the year is ending well for you guys. We'll catch you on the next video, guys. I'm out of here, see ya.